Welcome back! Today I'm gonna to take you with me to beautiful Bryce Canyon in Utah in the United States and I'm gonna show you how I transform this image to that image in Photoshop. Alright guys, my name is Philip and just recently I have spent a couple of months in beautiful Utah in the United States. And I do not know if you have ever gotten the chance to, you know, stay there for a while, but there are so many amazing national parks that you should try to at least go there once in your lifetime. It is freaking awesome. Now, this one, the one I'm going to talk about today, is called Bryce Canyon, and that's one for the lazy people. Usually you need to hike to get to the nice spots in, in Utah, but in this particular case you can just take your car, drive around, and stop every 10 meters because you have this amazing view across the whole damn canyon. And the, the views are so wide, it's, ah, it's just beautiful. All right, so I was lucky enough to reach the, uh, the sort of, you know, nice spot on the canyon uh, around when was it, maybe four in the afternoon or something, so when the sun was slowly setting, so I got a little bit of nice red in the back. And today I'm going to show you how I transformed this HDR image, which I took around that time, into, well, just, just a little bit better version, I suppose. And it's going to be all about basic cleanup, you know, straightening the image, making sure the colors are correct, and then just a little bit here and a little bit there, and we are done already. Now, let's jump right into Photoshop. As usual, if you haven't already and you are new, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and also if you feel like, you, know, you can always stay and subscribe to the channel, it'll help me out a lot. Alright, so what are we going to do today? Today we are having to do just some basic cleanup. What I want to do just in the foreground here, this area right here is a little bit too bright, but there's also this nice little, little hidden shadow, if you want, of these kind of roots of that amazingly super cool tree. And I want to bring these out a little bit more, right? So I'm going to darken down actually the whole area around. So it's just the edges, I'm going to bring them down. And I'm going to make sure that the reds in the middle of the park are a little bit increased so that, you know, just that it looks a bit nicer, I suppose. We're going to also add some more light into the center of the, of the, um, the canyon right here. We're going to darken down the sky a little bit and make sure that these needles from the tree are nice and soft green. All right, so let's get going. First thing, I'm always, uh, you know, that's just the way I do it. I'm going to duplicate my background layer by hitting Command and J on the keyboard. Now I have a copy of my background layer just here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quick curve adjustment layer. Just like that, clicking on the little symbol I have right here, I'm going to drag the curve down. And I'm only looking at the lower left hand corner right now, right here, because that's the only area for now that I would like to darken. And I want to darken it to something like that, maybe. Awesome. Now, of course, I have affected the whole image, which is not really what I want. So in order to not do that, I'm going to invert the layer mask on that curve adjustment layer, right? So now it's white, which is why everything is visible everywhere. And if I hit Command and I on my keyboard, I can make sure with the brush to only put the effect where I feel like it should be. So I'm going to hit B on my keyboard to get the brush, make it nice and large. And with an opacity of, say, 20% and a white color, I'm can, I can start now to brush around in that layer mask to bring a bit of darkness into the foreground here. Just like that, not too much, just to, you know, because before it was kind of far too bright, obviously, so I think that's going to help already out quite a bit. Now, we can also use the very same curve adjustment layer for the sky. So in that particular sense, I'm going to decrease my opacity of the brush to 10%. I'm just going to start brushing over that nice little sky, just a little bit around the edges to make sure, you know, we darken them down a little bit. Just like that, and I'm already happy with this. And also, what I want to do ultimately is bring the attention to the center of the canyon. So, I want to take it away from the side of the canyon. And a good way to do so is just by, you know, making things darker on the edges. So, I'm just going to go in and use the exact same curve adjustment layer on the edges right here. Just to make sure the attention ultimately is not actually in these areas, but once we lighten up the center, in the center of the image. Okay, let's have a quick look at the before and after. That's already awesome. So with a one simple curve adjustment layer, we have already, you know, adjusted the image to a point where I think it's actually not bad at all. I actually kind of like it. Okay, cool. Next thing we could do is to work on the tree a little bit. So let me see. Let's zoom in here and let's look at these at the tree. I do like the needles the way they are, but I could imagine them a little bit more green or at least a little bit of a lighter green. And in order to do that, well, we have to increase the colors, I suppose, and maybe change the hue a little bit as well. Let's just get going with that. So what I would do for that is first to select the color range, because I only want to affect the greens and not the whole image, right? In order to do so, I'm going to create what is called a stamp visible first. And that's essentially just to copy what we have just done onto a new layer. So if I hit Command, 
Alt, Shift and E on my keyboard. I copy everything that we just did, in, uh, like the, the curve adjustment layer onto a new layer, which I have now in the lower left hand, uh, right hand corner. Left and right, that's my, these are my strengths, I love them. Okay, so here we go. Um, then I'm gonna go up to Select and down to Color Range. And once I'm here, it's gonna offer me this little, well, preview, I suppose, of what I have selected. Now, the way it works is I can click on a color, for example, green. And if I do so, it's gonna theoretically at least select the color range of that color in the image. If I hold Shift in my keyboard, I can add additional colors to the selection I have done already. So what I'll do, I'll just click around here while I do not stop talking for about a minute straight, and I select all the kind of different colors we have in these needles uh, to the best of my ability. So I'm also gonna go out a little bit right here and there, and maybe a little bit here. Okay, so the idea is that I select as much as I can from these needles to make sure once I change the color, I only affect those, okay? Okay, and something like that. Let's see how that works. We can always, you know, try it again if it doesn't work out very well. Cool. Now, once I have done that sort of selection and I get this little preview right here, I can just hit OK, and it's going to turn whatever I just selected into a, well, a selection, I suppose. And now, once I have done that, with this selection, I'm going to click on the Hue and Saturation Adjustment Layer symbol, and it's going to automatically make sure that this adjustment, whatever I do here now, is only visible in the color range I had selected before. So now I can essentially, let me see, go in and change, change the hue. And as you can see, I will only change the hue of the needles because these are the ones I had selected prior. And I'm going to play around with those a little bit. Let's make them nice and green to something like that. We can also increase, oh, not too much, that's too much, far too much. Maybe, maybe like that, it's already enough. And I mean, we could make them red as well, which is kind of cool. But no, I want to have a nice and soft green, just something like that. Awesome. Cool. Let's make that small, zoom out a little bit and see if that had an effect on the image. And if I switch that on or off, I do definitely have to say that I like it a lot. Um, what we have done also is we have selected a couple of other greens in the image, the ones from the trees in the background. If we felt like with the layer mask selected and the black brush, we could just get rid of those. Um, I mean, you know, I can just quickly do it because it's not that much, but uh, usually I wouldn't bother now because it just takes forever. Okay, here we go. Kind of fixed already. I'm happy enough with that. Awesome. Now, similarly, I'm going to create another hue saturation layer, and I'm just going to increase saturation. What I want to do is, in the very center of the canyon, make sure that the red is really shining, okay? So I'll just increase the saturation just a tiny bit, make my brush, brush even larger, and with an opacity of, say, 20%, I'm going to bring that red through. At 20%, I said, not 40. I'm going to bring that red through in a couple of these mountain areas right here. Okay, that's cool. I'm liking this. To bring out this, the shadow which we have here a little bit more, I can either try to play with levels or I'm being lazy and I do love being lazy because it's just so much faster. I can also use a pre-prepared filter from the Nick collection. So let me show you how that works. If I click on Command, Alt, Shift and E once more, I'm going to create another stamp visible. Now that all the information are on this layer, I can go up to the top to filter, can go down to Nick Collection, which is a free set of you know filters essentially, and go to Color Effects Pro 4. If you do not know, own this particular set of Nick Collection filters yet, go and download it right now because it's free and it's awesome. You know, sometimes when you're processing an image and you don't really know where you're going, it's awesome just to you know put your image in there and click through the filters just to get an idea of what could be possible. Okay, so where we want to go is contrast color range. And let me just toggle that on or off. And actually doing a great deal to the whole image. The only thing I'm interested in right now is indeed the lower left hand corner with the shadow. So I'm just going to hit OK. And wait until the collection has loaded up and processed my image. It's going to take a second and I'll bring you back once it's done. And we're back and the Nick Collection has finished processing our image. Now if I switch it on or off, you can see that the shadows are a little bit more defined. And in just a moment, we will decrease the brightness around the edges of the image even more and then they will come out just beautifully. Trust me on that one, all right? Now before we however do that, I wanna make sure that I have some more darkness in my image. So if I, if I zoom in a little bit now, you can see that there's all these amazing stone structures right here and the sun is coming from behind them, right? So they should maybe be a little bit darker on that side. So I'm just quickly, and you know, there are many ways to do it. I'm just gonna be very lazy and very fast right here. I'm gonna create another curve adjustment layer and with a brush, I'm just gonna make sure that I darken down those guys just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna go, you know, to a couple of them 
and make sure that on the side, which is not towards the sun, that they actually have a little bit of darkness. And that's just going to add a little bit more, how would you say, realism to the image. I mean, obviously it was an HDR image, right? So that means I took three different images with three different lightings, if you want. And I have combined them using a software called Photomatix Pro. And in that particular sense, it's going to all be visible in the image. And that's sometimes cool, but sometimes you might add a little bit more darkness again to your image to make sure it actually looks realistic. Okay, so that's just on the side and just a tiny bit just to make sure we have some darkness. Oh yeah, I think that actually works quite well already. Cool, I like that. Good, so I would say nearly the last step to do is to darken down the edges. And to create such a vignette, there are multiple ways. You can use pre-prepared filters, you can use the camera raw filter from Photoshop. Um, I'm gonna show you a manual way today, just because why not? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a curve adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring it down. And I'm gonna bring it down to maybe something like that, suppose. Now look at that shadow, it looks way better now that it's a little bit more, how would you say, visible, I suppose. Okay, once we have done that, I'm going to select my elliptical marquee tool and I'm going to draw a circle in the center of the image. Do something like, maybe something like that. Once I have done that, I'm going to hit com uh, I'm going to hit shift and backspace on my keyboard and I'm going to fill the selection with black. I'm doing this because the layer mask, which is currently on the curve adjustment layer, is white. So I'm going to, make, uh, going to fill it with the opposite, which is black. Okay. Now, if I now deselect that, hitting Command and D, I have this white blurb in the center of my image, which is interesting, granted, but not exactly beautiful. So we're going to have to blur this. In order to do so, just have the layer mask selected and go up to Filter, Blur, and then down to Gaussian Blur. And once there, I'm going to select the blur radius, which is kind of nice. So actually, the way it was before, it's not bad at all. Let's just stick with something like with something like that. Why wouldn't we? Awesome. So this is to darken down the edges. Okay, now we have to brighten up the center a little bit as well, because that's what I said I'm gonna do. So let's just do it. What I'll do, I copy that adjustment by hitting Command and J. Now I have that twice. And now of course the edges are gonna be extremely dark. And what I can do now, I'll just go into my curve adjustment and I increase the brightness instead to something maybe like maybe like that. And the only thing left to do is to invert that layer mask. So what we want, we want essentially complementary curve adjustment layers, right? So if I hit Command and I now, I make sure that I brighten the center in this curve adjustment layer, in the upper one, whereas the lower one is darkening down the edges, okay? Now, if I think that's a bit too much, I can always just decrease the opacity a little bit, maybe something like that. And also what I would like to do, I want to bring this brightening effect out just a little bit on a couple of areas within the image. For example, you see that if I look at that tree, that we have sort of cut off a little bit of light from the branch on the left-hand side here. That's not super amazing. So let's just bring it back using a simple brush with a white color. I'm just gonna tap around these branches to make sure we take a little bit of that away. So oh, also what I should do is actually, I should go to this one. Okay, uh, next, oh, way too much. We don't wanna have it too bright. Just want to make sure they are visible, but not too visible. <laughs> okay, let's make it a bit smaller and also go to the side here. Okay, that's cool. I like that. And maybe, well, maybe, maybe something like that. Okay, you get the idea, right? And usually you have to do all the smaller branches as well. I'm not going to do it right now because it just takes a little bit longer than the time I want to spend on that. Cool. Now, let's also bring back some brightness, just, just some brightness in the area back here. And important for me is this area on the lower right here. For whatever reason, I think it shouldn't be that dark. Okay, maybe to something like this. Boom. Okay, awesome. We are nearly there, nearly there. So the uh, one of the things left to do is to brighten up the tree, I suppose, a little bit, and also to darken down these the cliff, which is right here. It's a bit too bright, so it's still drawing a little bit of attention, which I don't really want it to draw. So what I would like to do now, first to get a nice before and after effect of that vignette we have just created, I'm going to select the two layers, I'm going to hit Command and G on my keyboard, that'll group them, and now I can switch it off and on. And normally darkening and lightening the center on such a wide area, if you do have some sort of sunset or whatever, it normally works wonder. It's like really helpful to give the image such a... I wouldn't know what the proper vocabulary is for that, but just a good feeling, it's just a moody and nice feeling. All right, cool. Once more, curve adjustment layer, we're nearly there. I'm gonna bring it down, just looking at the cliff right here. I'm gonna invert it, hit Command and I, and I'm gonna go in and just then um, reduce the brightness a little bit here, make it a bit smaller. Okay, 
Let's increase that opacity to 30%, just to take that glow out of that area just a tiny bit, maybe. And also, we might as well, with 20%, just get rid of a bit of the brightness right here. Okay, way better. And now the opposite thing, I'm going to create another curve adjustment. It's very simple, basic cleanup today, and that, but it's really enjoyable to do that, actually. I'm going to hit Command and I, and now I want to just bring that back in the stem of that particular amazingly looking tree here. I think I'm going to use that tree in whatever composite image if I do one next. Now, and I'm going to just go over that a couple of times just to get the brightness into that stem. Because then it's going to pop a little bit more, and we, like do, we do like things that pop out a little bit more, right? Okay, something like that. It doesn't have to be too strong. I don't want it too strong, of course. I just want, to, want it to be standing out a little bit more. Just something like that. And I'm actually quite happy with that. Now, from the HDR merging, I'm not sure if you can see this, but there is a little, a little issue down here in the corner. Um, no problem. We could either crop it, I suppose, but we can also just use the Spot Healing Brush tool. So I'm going to hit Command, Alt, Shift, and E once more, just to create a stamp visible. I'm going to hit J on my keyboard. I'm going to set a spot here. I'm going to go over to the end of the image, hold shift, and click again here. And it should theoretically get rid of this kind of white weird line which was there before. Awesome. Cool. And that is more or less all I had to do to work on that image. It was incredibly cool because I didn't have to do much. I love these kind of things. And the only thing which we probably should do is to drag the image a tiny bit towards the lower left-hand corner. Because the tree is not 100% straight. And I don't know, it bugs me. So let's just get rid of that. What I can do is because I just I already have my stamp visible, I hit Command and T on my keyboard, that's the transform tool. And then I can hit this little button up here, just next to the interpolation. If I click this, it's gonna give me this kind of raster. And now I can take the corner and drag it towards the left, do something like that. Once I'm happy, I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna think for a second. And now we have the tree a little bit more straight, not too much, just a little bit but I am actually a big fan of it. Awesome. And here we go. And that is all we have to do. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Once more, if you haven't already and you're new, don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up, the little thumb, thumbs up and leave a like. And if you have any comments, do you know put them in the comment section down below. Also, if you have already been to Bryce Canyon, do attach a picture either to the blog or to however you can or any social media, because I want to know how your image looks from there, because I'm 100% sure, depending on the weather and the time of the year you go there, you have amazing views and they're all going to be different. Show me yours, I'll show you mine. Other than that, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye!